All right. And on this short video here, or this short episode, I should say, depending on what avenue you're listening to this, uh, in, we're going to be going through the rights of word for war for the Word Bearers Legion. Um, just as we've done for the others, we're going to start with a bit of a bit of a refresher. We are going to change up one little bit. Normally, we go through limitations first, although for one of the rights of war, the limitation makes no sense unless you kind of talk about the effects first. So that'll kind of be done all at once. But for the other one, we'll mention some limitations first. And for this, I'm going to be doing the refresher. So if you have either not watched our episode on the word bearers, or if it's been a little bit, because it honestly has been a little bit since we've put it out. Um, for the word bearers, um, this was unfortunately one of the legions we seemed very um, middle of the road on. I think it just didn't hit for us too great, although that doesn't mean they are not themselves good. Um, for their trait, they have true believers. Their leadership characteristics can never be modified below a value of six. And if they are in combat with someone who's not word bearers and the combat's a tie, they instead get to win by one. If both sides are word bearers, it doesn't matter. Um, for their advanced reaction is actually one of the strongest, I think, overall. Um, someone's going to shoot you. You can just kill one of your models. That shooting attack ends. Nothing else happens. All other rules, everything else is essentially thrown aside. Um, they have some special units, but we'll get into those when they come up related to these rights of war. So I think Dan said that he wanted... No, sorry. Uh, we're going with the Dark Brethren first, which is Steve's, because that's the order I have these written in. I do want to point out real quick, though, before we go to the Dark Brethren, one of the big things that someone put on the YouTube comments that yes. really changes one of my opinions. Just I just want to point out for five seconds. Okay. No, please do. I know we were we were big on like the Zardu, and we really loved him, but we kind of hated the fact that he couldn't leave his unit, his retinue. And we're like, wow, he's so really good, except he can't leave his retinue, which sucks. Apparently, GW did FAQ that he can actually leave his retinue um so okay so so it wasn't yeah. original but now they have actually changed yes. the rules to allow him to do that good yes. which makes him lord have mercy a lot better um because yeah. he was good out it was but it was just like oh wow he's got two mooks with him this is useless so i just like the fact that someone commented we do hear you um and it makes him a lot better in my opinion so i just wanted to yeah. point that out there I mean, one thing to keep in mind, obviously, when we do this sort of coverage, there's, you know, a little bit of a timestamp on it in such a way that there's going to be FAQs and potential changes. We've seen some units after we talked about the Legion get added new units. So we are, you know, at some random point in the future, going to discuss any of the big changes that might occur related to that. But do realize, like, there's going to be some changes. So if this is your Legion, that's a that's a great change. All right, why don't we take a look at this first very wordy right of war, which I think Stephen has gotten himself a nice little uh, shortcut yep. to talk about. I wrote, I rewrote this right of war as a series of bullet points and arrows because it makes far more sense in this format than as the giant blob of letters and spaces and commas that this is. I think there's like three periods in that whole paragraph. It's kind of terrifying. So... Um, the Dark Brethren. The, the idea of this right of war is that um, your detachment of word bearers is offering up um, to the Dark Gods, um, you know, glory from defeating enemies. And so at the beginning of the game, after deployment, but before infiltrators come out, you pick an enemy unit on the table to be sacrificed. If the enemy has no models that have been deployed at this point, you could choose a unit that's either in reserves or otherwise off the table. Now, because um, infiltrators are off the table at the point where you would make this selection, you could choose a unit that is infiltrating. Um, weird that they decided that was the order of sequencing, but I guess it makes sense because the um, infiltrators are sneaking up. They wouldn't be a clear target. I don't know. But anyway, before infiltrators, you pick a unit on the table. If there are none, pick anyone. That's the unit you want to sacrifice to the gods. Moving from that point forwards, every turn, you want to inflict at least one unsaved wound or hull point in your own turn on that unit from something in your detachment. If you fail to do this, you're going to suffer perils of the warp on a random unit from the detachment. If you happen to kill off that entire targeted unit, then you gain the favor of the dark gods, and you can pick any unit in the detachment and increase its movement, weapon skill, and strength by one. Any given unit could get this bonus three times for a potential plus three move. 
plus three weapon skill and plus three strength, which is kind of insane. Um, and that's pretty much the right of war. The limitations are the fact that if you don't do that damage, like I mentioned earlier, you take a random perils to warp on somebody. And shockingly, the word bears right of war says the word bears have to be the traitors. Who would have guessed? Um, and one big note, just because it might not be immediately apparent, Lords of War are in a separate detachment. So if this is your primary or an ally detachment, whatever detachment it is, your super heavy tanks not going to get to either benefit from this or help you towards it. So remember that when you're picking what your targets are and writing around this list. This one to me feels like it, it absolutely does a lot for what... It feels both like a good fluff choice because it fits what they would do, but it also feels like it's a really strong choice just in general Um, because I kind of really do like what it does, especially when we think about some of their, say, more melee units, Galver Bach or something like that, being able to buff up some of those guys because you're unlike Dan's thought, not every single unit you're going to ever face is maximized and it doesn't (laughs) say it can't be. There's nothing about it being infantry or anything like that. So you could choose like the rhino, uh, right? Is there anything about having to be an infantry? No, because or... not no that I see. Out. No. So, so one of the things you could knock off. So if you have a las cannon squad, say yeah, that rhino's toast. But yeah, here's the downside: yeah. your opponent knows what unit's been chosen, and if they want to make your life difficult, they could absolutely hide that unit somewhere. Uh, although you do pick after it's been deployed, so it depends yes. on what oh absolutely absolutely you know but you're well and anything that forces your opponent to do something is good if your opponent now has to look at it and say "Ooh, i know what my squishier targets are i know what my bad matchups are and those are the units he's going to pick then you know i've already won part of the, you know the the pre-game fight because now you might not be making your optimal choices because you're worried about the bonus it could give me very true yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna have models die. So, so when making a listless right of war, how would you approach it? You want to inflict wounds uh... every turn, or else you're gonna take a little bit of damage. If you finish off units, you get bonuses. That leads Ironically, me in two very different directions. Yes. Ironically, ally in. Not going to work, Dan. Allies it's not going to work. Not in the tab. They're, they're not yeah. part of the that yeah, right of war. This is just so weird. Yeah. Um, no, that wh- whatever you put in there has yeah. to be doing the killing. Now there are no other restrictions or anything else like that, so you can essentially fill in what you want into a normal force org. So to me, you're going to want at least one long range heavy unit, be it last cannon squad or plasma cannon, something that can put damage down range. I think then you also want to, I mean, you're playing word bearers. You're probably going to have, you know, Gal Verbach, but something also for close combat, because there'll be times when that's what you want to be picking is the unit that you're about to probably get in charge into that round or something. Um, I, I don't know if you have to build your army a special way to do this. As long as your army's goal wasn't just to win because you're not going to, like, run away. I, 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 okay. It's, it's just... Go ahead. I, I don't know. Like, it's such a hard... Maybe it's just too many words in my... <laughs> like, it, it's... Uh, I just don't know how to approach this from a gameplay it, standard. Well, it's simple. P- pick a unit, and you need them to die. If you don't even hurt them, you're going to take damage. That in essence, that's what it is. And hey, you killed them. Go pick someone else. And you never. Here's the thing, though. You also, it's not a choice. You never stop picking. So you are each time you kill someone, you're going to choose another option straight down the line. Maybe like suicide seeker squads with combi meltas. But if you don't kill out the full unit, it's not necessarily doing you any good. Yeah, but at least it prevents and... you from getting pinged for damage. So I was thinking yes. a last cannon squad might be a good choice because it could hit Absolutely. anything to at least inflict wounds, if nothing else. Um, I feel like close combat units either tie things up or completely wipe them out with very little in between. So yeah. you would need something that's terrifying in close combat and probably stacks a bunch of leadership penalties. 
um, naturally this list, um, this right of war rather, is going to play against um, MSU style armies, you know, multiple small units. It's great against them. But if someone's bringing big bulky units that have decent leadership, decent staying power, then it's going to struggle. So this is one Are that you... depends a lot on your opponent's force war. Because if they bring, you know, an army that's, you know, three 10-man bricks of fire drakes, you're just not getting your bonuses. And you're fighting to not take extra damage. I could but see this on the other hand, me. if it's an Alpha Legion style army where it's like, you know, here's five squads of five man, um, you know, sniper teams, just, tr- just pin them down, kill them, get buff. I could see this also working well against like when custodians, <laughs> when they were supposed to come out this month. No, uh, but against custodians, because custodians usually run MSU. Unless somehow that changed, but I don't see it changing. So I could see this working really well against, you know, a custodian's player who's running three to four man squads or a mechanical yeah. player. Um, I, but, I, the only blob unit in Mechanicum is the tech thralls. Well, he says Phalax could be a 27 wound brick. But sure. their base leadership isn't great, even though they have yeah. stubborn. So maybe you could sweep them off the board. Leadership seven, yeah. And and the big thing to remember, you know, primarily what you're going to face is space marines. So as long if you can, if you can get through what you need there, you should be able to handle a bit of what yeah, the other factions else. are yeah. going to do. Um, definitely pack anti tank because if you face a mechanized list and you don't have that ready, you're going to be hurting bad. Yes. So I would, I definitely think a last cannon team has its place in this. I could see that. Are we, uh, talk, are we talking five men or are we talking ten men? <sighs> go big or I, go I, home. I hate to say it. Yeah, I, I would say a ten man. What do you mean you hate to say it? You love saying to take no, ten but man no, squads okay. for everything. But sometimes like a ten man last cannon squad is going to attract. <laughs> um, take um, take land raider transports where possible because they could triple up on last cannons and either Ooh, focus something you, you, down or split it up as you know as needed that way you don't have 10 last cannons shooting one thing no you are for the for, turns I, where you don't need it that is good i like that yeah no i i, I agree i think the the last cannon squad i think is what's going to really help this thing also like you said because then your good targets could be the vehicles that those last cannons both want to fire at will probably kill with the number of shots and everything like that they will have and your last can squads probably to some extent especially you know early when there's a little more night fighting on because of your advanced reaction their survivability is definitely greatly increased because your opponent's going to have to fire multiple things at them if they really want to do anything because you could just say hey the first time no get rid of it i don't care that you fired your giant heavy squad at mine all those shots are wasted except for one guy that reaction so. is huge. I, I forgot about that aspect, too. That is yes. a, that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, if they want to dedicate enough, yeah, they'll kill it. But if you want to dedicate enough, you can kill anything. But at least this way, you know, th- they, they have to it. spend. Yeah, they have to spend more. And, you know, again, you also have another rest of your army doing something. So um, anything on this right away. I'll, I'll give it props for props I do. This is probably one of the more interesting rights of war we have reviewed in my opinion yes yeah um if if there were legion i was interested in playing this is absolutely what i would go for and obviously you want close combat units to receive the benefits because bonus weapon skill and strength doesn't do much for last cannon squad but for some say um iconoclasts yeah that'll that'll be a pretty nice perk galvor back yeah galvor back are already great yeah, with but they're be good better. strength and all that. Yeah, <laughs> but imagine pyroclasts rocking up at a py- iconoclasts rocking up with their with their little hand flamers, burning something, charging oh, yeah, no, it, bonus strength, all that. I'm definitely yeah. not saying this because I got the well, um, <laughs> receiving end of this. <laughs> yeah, totally not biased whatsoever. What? It, it was terrifying, dude. A big ten man block dropped in front of me. Dropped. What was it? Eight hand flamers and two inferno pistols on me. Really did a lot of damage to the squad, and then just charged it and mopped it up the rest of the way. Got the bonus. Went to the next squad. Did the same thing because at this point, you know, now they're swinging a higher strength, higher weapon skill. It's they do pretty good with this. 
Galvor back? Do too. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's take a look at the other right of war that they have. And Dan is going to take this one because it's shorter and has less words. <laughs> that's, is, exactly, that's why, it though. Is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's up. I'm shorter is better. It's okay. Short people rise up. So uh, limitations. I will start with limitations on this one because. Yes. Yeah, that. So the detachment using this right of war may not include any units with the movement characteristic zero. Hey, I remember this one. <laughs> Unless that model also has the orbital assault vehicle special rule, so drop pods, um, or any unit with the artillery unit subtype. Oh, okay. So no artillery. Interesting. Uh, an army whose primary detachment is using this right of war uh, may not take an allied detachment. Okay, interesting. Uh, you cannot use this right of war as an allied detachment. And an army that includes a detachment using this right of war must have the traitor allegiance. All right. I have a yeah. bad feeling this is going to be all about <laughs> drop potting demons and shit. So Galvorback squads may be taken as troop choices in this detachment using the right of war. Okay. That's frees up your elite slots. Are they elite or are they fast attack? They're elite. They're elite. Okay. So it, fe- yeah. it frees up your elite slot. You get four. So yeah. um, they don't get line though, it seems. All right. So let's keep going. All Galvorak squads in the detachment using this right of war may select a Legion Dreadclaw drop pod as a dedicated transport. That's sexy. That's I like that. Is that the I always forget? Is that the is that the assault vehicle one or no? Uh, I always well, confuse yeah. this with the other one. Okay, thank you. I was about to say my, my book is on the floor. I didn't have it. No, open. no, no. no oh, she, my, unless yep, my that, 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 that should be it. That's yeah. Steve said yes. No, you think it's this? Yes. I'm, I'm looking at it. Also good. Okay, I was gonna say the Dread Claw's not an assault drop pod though. It's it's the you know, it's not an assault transport. That's the Charybdis. All right, still not bad. It's still not bad. It's still not bad. And then any unit composed entirely of models, the infantry unit subtype with access to a Legion Rhino transport may also uh select the Legion drop pod. Okay, so base okay, so I get the point. This is very easy. So essentially you're going to have of troops, um, and you can get access to drop pods and or dread claw drop pods. Um they're not the assault ones. The dread call though, are just for the Galvor Bach, though. Yeah, the Galvor. Well, the reason probably is because the dread claw can hold more, and I think if I remember correctly, Galvor back are bulky. Yes, they are bulky. Okay, so that makes sense. They're bulky too. Yeah, I was gonna say the the where the hell is a dread claw holds twelve, whereas the drop pod holds ten. So and oh, the but, basic but he, drop pod can't carry bulky models because it's infantry transport. Exactly. Okay, that makes yep. sense. Dread Claw is a uh, correction, in case it wasn't clear, the Dread Claw is not an assault view. No, no, that's the Charybdis, yeah. I always yeah. confuse the two, but Charybdis is the massive one. Dread Claw is, well, still big, but not as, not Charybdis big. Um, yeah. No, I mean, okay, this is basically Drop Pod World Leaders Army. Okay. I, I mean, I like it. <laughs> it's, it's simple, easy. If you have Drop Pods, you can use them. Um, and if you want to play a drop pod army, you can use them. It's really like there's no bonuses other than the troop choices for Galvorback. Okay, and uh, the fact that they can take a transport because they don't naturally have transports. Yeah, but also yeah, I mean you could take drop pods with your troops for demons. What more could you want in life? Yeah, I mean it's it's good. I like it. I mean it is an assault vehicle, so you are somewhat shit out of luck when it drops. Um, but. You can drop three of them, you know what I mean, and poop out. I, what are they? What are they? Bulky three, bulky, bulky two? two, bulky, bulky two. two. So like, drop two drop pods. That's two sets of six Galvor back. You know, that's still scary. They can't assault out of it, but that like, that's a big blow. And make someone, um, well, because, it'll make someone scared. And because it's not a um, orbital assault right of war, it's normal deep strike. For the reserves type that they go into yep. so you could bring them in with an assault squad or an iconoclast squad or something of that type that also has deep strike to um tie units up that would threaten the galvor back and then in the following turn charge the galvor back in okay um serrated sun that's the um the chapter that did the red armor first right uh, they're the I ones that so, yes. messed things up big time on Kelf. You, you like, they're the, the ones that ruined Kelf. Pretty sure. Yes. Um, and they're the ones that the Galvarbot come from. Yup. And do you guys remember um, that animated video someone did for um, The Death of Hope? Yes. A while ago. No, yeah. I don't think I watched that. 
No, it was oh, good. Man, you got to watch it. It's fantastic. Um, it is. Uh, the, 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 I loved side That's note. this right of war. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I love the scene where they're shooting the Terminators and the bullets are stopped before it hits the Terminators, kind yeah. of reflecting the shield. That was pretty neat. If that if that makes sense, if that's the Gal Vorback, right of war, a hundred percent understand that. Yep, that's pretty much what's going on. They're drop potting in word bearers. They got demons. That's like, what is it's a going shock, on? Yeah. It's shock assault demons. Got it. Yep. This would pair well. Well, okay, so this would pair well with demons. I don't know because, of course, GW is GW. So you um, can't ally them in. So you'd have to take an esoterist yeah, to use I demons mean, with this. I mean, can you? It's, it's it, why not? Is an esoterist? Now I gotta check if an esoterist lets you bring in allied demons through their allied things, or if they demons. just are part of the thing. Yeah, Legion esoterist. Okay, non-compulsory choices from the army list in the record. Got it. Okay, so yeah, perfect. So yes, yeah. So terrorist would absolutely this would, work in this. So hopefully we get demon rule soon, but that being said, this would, I mean, the way demons used to work, this would be pretty cool. Drop pot in, the terrorist comes in, demons come close to him. That's a pretty nice, like, oh shit moment, you know what I mean? I like it. This is neat. All right. Um, yeah, I, I like the other one a whole lot more. Uh, that might, I also don't have, like, drop pods. So I've had a bunch of drop pods, maybe more exciting. But the first one to me is, is, more, is the more exciting. Thing. I will well, say. Here's the thing about the first one. It, yeah, go it, it's more spiritual to word bears because it's so damn wordy. It's, it's, a, it's per, a perfect thematic match. Oh my God. Yeah. I will say as someone who built, what, six or seven of them when I had the White Scars army, um, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> drop pods are sometimes they can be like, it's weird. Every different one. I swear one sculpt was fine and one box was fine. And then the other one, I, it was just, it did not want to connect together. And it was, it was like the worst. Um, but the cool thing is, again, we mentioned this. Oh my God. This was like our, our first or second podcast when we mentioned this a while ago. But for those who don't know, if you take the drop pod from GW that they sell, and you can find them cheap online, by the way, drop pods are like, <laughs> not, 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 no, not that cheap, honestly. Really? No, I remember they used to be like, at the time. They were not as cheap as you think. Oh, okay. They're really not. But for those who don't know, if you want more of a quote unquote heresy look or traitor look, um, you take those fins. So like if you Google like what a drop pod looks like, it has those, uh, those spinal fins around it. Take those fins. You can actually reverse those fins to give it more of like a dread claw look. You have to do some shaving around the area, but it actually works really, really well. And it actually looks pretty damn cool too. All right. It's one of the easiest, one of the easier conversions to do. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that might do it for us for these rights of war. Uh, 